Hey folks, this is Ab Shocker. This is the fifth video on Swift programming for iOS. Today, we're going to create an app that displays a form. And this form will save a TXT file on our iOS device. Okay, let's just start right away. Create your single view application, click on next, and we're going to call it form and save file app. Click on next, create it in your default project folder. And now we're good to go to do some interface building. Okay, let's just go to our main storyboard. Click on here. Let's just change this here in order to make it a little slimmer. And now we want to use three UI text fields, one label and two buttons. So let's just start off with that. We need a text field here. Let's just use it this way here. And we're going to copy paste them. So let's just do it very, very, very quickly. Good. So let's just click on here. And you already know that we have to use a, a placeholder. Good. In this case, we're going to use a placeholder name called name. And here we're going to use a placeholder that's called last name. And here we're going to call it age. Just for your information, as I told you previously, this is a form. So what we want to uh, get here is uh, first a user's name, his or her last name, and her age. And we want to save all this information in a txt file. So now we got our three text uh, fields. Now we need to have a label. Let's just use a label here. Good. We're going to put the label down here. And I'm going to write down default uh, text. And we need a button. Now let's just remove this here. Now I need a button. Good. So let's just put this here. And we need another one. Let's just put it here. I'm going to put the label down here and the button here. So, and in this case, um, we're going to call this button save file. And here, load file. So the reason why we're going to do it is we want to save the file coming in from the name text field, from the last name text field, and from the age text field to be saved in a txt file. So when we click on save file, this is when everything happens. And later on, in order to make sure that everything, that everything worked and that we can retrieve the information that we saved previously, we click on the load file button and then down here we want to make the information that we saved previously in the txt file to be displayed in this label here. So first we need to go back to our view controller class. Let's just click on here. First of all, um, we need to make sure that we have some variables we're going to use on a regular basis in this app. So for information, in order to save files or the proper term in computer science is to persist data on our iOS device here is to select a folder that is available to your app and to save that data in that folder. For instance, iOS gives you the possibility to save files in a folder that is called documents. There is also another one that is called temp. 
In our case, we're going to use the documents folder. In order to make sure that we're not going to make uh, too many um, redundant um, variables that will refer to the document, we're, we will use a constant variable that we will use in, in different methods. So let's just go up here and just declare our constants first. Let's just write a lat and now let's just call this variable the documents folder for saving files. Now, now we need to look for something that's called search. Exactly, this is it. And now you have to use a dot that's called doc, document directory. Another dot user domain mask we're going to call it true and here we're going to put a zero as string good so let's just an analyze the string here don't worry about this code here it looks a little confusing at first glance but the more you're going to code with swift the more it will be clear to you what these um methods and parameters and so on mean very quickly said what we did is we created a reference to the folder to the folders place on our iOS, iOS device where we can store files basically said and we retrieve this reference this path to this folder as a string and we need this information as a string because now what we're going to do is we're going to append a another string to the string that we retrieved so that iOS knows what is the path where we want to store our data and what this file is called so let's just write down this here Let's just call, let's just create another uh, constant which is called the file name. And as I told you previously, we're gonna, gonna create a txt file. So let's just call it the user file.txt. Remember here you got this here because the the string we will receive from this variable here. It's just the path so in order to make sure that in the path in the folder you create this file here so we need this here a forward slash so and furthermore what we also need is another variable that we're gonna call the path to the file exactly now now is the place where we're gonna join everything together what we just wrote down in this case we're gonna use this here I'm gonna copy paste it here dot string by appending string and what we're gonna append this here the file name so and now we have a constant that refers exactly to the folder up here and we also append uh, the, the file name where we want to store our information that we get from our user so now we get now we have the three basic information that we need for storing a txt file just for your information of course it is possible to get rid of those two variables and write everything down in just one line However, bear in mind that this is a tutorial, so I just show you all the steps included in making sure that you get your final variable referencing to the file that you want to, where you want to store your information. Good, let's just go on with our, our code here. So now we got our three variables right. But now we have to go back to our storyboard. Here in our storyboard, you have to create some variables for our code up here in the view controller so that we can work with our interface so as you know already we just go to our storyboard and we go to this menu here 
Let's just get rid of this here. And let's just create some variables. Now, you already know that. Just hit on Control. Click on your left mouse button and create your variables. Let's just put them here. This is the name text field. So let's just create more space here. Let's just create another one. It's called the last name text field. Now let's just create here another one. It's the age text field. And now let's create one for our label. Let's just call it the label. And very importantly, we also need to have two methods. And you already know that too here. Let's just create an action. Let's just call it the save, save button function. So let's just connect it here. Exactly, we need here something to be done. And we need this one here. Good, and this is also an action, and this is the load file button function. Same holds true for here. Good. Now let's just go back and let's just go to our view control Swift class. Okay, now we have all the information we need. Let's just create here. Just get rid of the space here so that you can see the code more clearly. Let's just go here so you see that these are all of type UI text field and UI label. Good. Now, what is really important is that most of the part regarding the logic takes place in this function here, in the save button function. Now, let's just make sure that first of all we retrieve the information entered via via the text fields so we need to have a local variable that's called in this case let's call it the name and we want to get this here the string coming in via the text field the name text field copy paste it here and it's this is text Good, now we create another one. It's called the last name. And we get it from this text field here. I just copy paste here. Let's call it text as well. And we create another variable. It's called the age text field. And the same, what's true for this here, the age, the age text field text. And just hang on, what is not correct? Let's just copy paste it here. Good. Now let's just put them here to make sure that you see everything correctly. Good. Let's just remove the space here. Now, just don't be confused that this will disappear very soon. Um, let's just call it the, the H. Yeah, that's the reason why it was highlighted here. But let's just change it here, the, the name of the variable, because it, there can be a confusion when you have two different variables, actually, but they have the same uh, wording, so there is a contradiction, and you shouldn't make, make it that way. So just use two different names for each variable. Okay, we have just done that, and now let's just go back to the thing that we wanted to do previously and okay now we have our three variables holding the strings coming in from the three text fields here that is good now what we need to do is we have to make sure that we can actually save these three uh, values or in this case the three strings as a txt file so in order to do so we need to create another string that uh, joins all those th three strings together. Now, one of the most easiest way is to do it that way. Let's just call it the string we will 
save as a txt file. And now we're going to write down the user's info is and the following. So just bear in mind, we're talking about the information that a user enters in a form. So that's the reason why I write down the user info is and just use this here. Now, this is important that this here, this syntax here, makes clear to iOS that here what is following is a reference or, or it's just a, yeah, it's a reference to the string variable we're going to introduce here. So let's just call, just copy paste it here, the name, and write down a comma to separate those three strings from each other and just do the same way again here and we're going to copy paste this here there and we're going to do the same thing for age very quickly and we got the name the last name and the age okay now we got our string here good so that's basically it for constructing the final string we will save as a txt file. So now, now what we have to do is to make sure that we actually can save something as a file on our iOS device. First of all, there is something that is called the, the, the NS file manager. The file manager is actually the, the class that takes care of writing, uh, creating, modifying, deleting files on an iOS device. So we need this class in order to make um, these operations here. Let's just create um, the file manager in order to make sure that we can actually create operations methods such as creating, deleting, modifying, and so on. Let's just create a variable, a constant one. In this case, it's the file manager, it's just called this way. And we have a class, it's called NS file manager, and we got the default manager. So now we can make sure that we use the default one. And now we ask if I just but if something is not okay, for instance, if the file manager now it has a property that is called file or exists at path. Now, now we tell them just check if a file already exists at that path. So, what is the path to the file? That is up here that we created. Now I'll just copy paste this here and put it there. So, and this here, the exclamation mark, make sure that if no file exists or if no file exists at this path, then do something. And now we tell them what to do. So well now we, let's just create a var for an error object. This is very important here because if you create files or if you delete files, then you have to make sure that if you create a file, you, you need to ask your operating system, system whether um, the operation uh, was successful or not. Depending on that, then you need to do something else. For instance, like to redo the creation process. This is a very important thing here you have to include. So uh, as a result, you create an error um, variable. Let's just call it this way, the, the right error. And it's of type error. And we need a question mark here. Let's just write down, and we need another variable that is called the file to be written. And this is actually the variable um, 
that it, that holds the object, the the actual txt file that will be written um, on the on your iOS device. So let's just write down the uh, yeah. We need to make sure which one we're gonna use. So in this case here we need to use this information here because this is actually what we want to save this is the string here let's just use this string here and now this is very important a string also has a property that is called write to file so and now where do you want to save your file we have something that is called the path to the file let's just copy paste it here Atomically means that you actually persist, you actually write it down on the disk of your iOS device and just say true. Now you have to use some encoding as this is NSUTF8, it's 8 string encoding. And very important, you need to make sure that your actual write error object is also created in the case of not being able to write down your file on the disk of your iOS device. Good. Now, this was the first step. Now we need to make sure of another step. Now, what I told you previously, we need this error object here in the case that something went wrong while persisting meaning writing the file to your disk of your iOS device. If this happens, and that's the reason why we write down if, if the write error object is nil, meaning that there is nothing, so nothing happened wrong in the wrong way, then let's just tell that to to the developer or to yourself just making sure that everything went well let's just print down that on the device console just bear in mind that no problems we're going to write down we could save the file and the content was so this is also something what i like to do is just to show to me that we actually did it right so and and the the operating system could also track the information that was saved to to the ios device so let's just write down yeah and then you write down you're going to use this variable because this is the information that we're going to persist so i just want to show it to me again that yeah actually this is the information that was taken and written down to the ios device so if everything went well this is what it means then just write this here to the device console that no problems we could save the file and the comment was the following now if if something went wrong then we're going to tell that to ourselves too this is very important here just remove this string oh we just write down we encountered an error and this error is, and now very important now, uh, you see the role of the um, NS error object, which is the right error. So, so you see, up to now, we have taken care of checking whether the file that we want to create already exists. And if it does not exist, then we write it down with the information retrieved from the UI text fields. And we also make sure that if something went wrong during that operation, we get the message of it, meaning here we encounter an error. But and in the case of everything went well, we write down no problems, we could save the file. Good. So, and this happens in the case that there was no file there previously however what happens if we have already taken care of that previously meaning that we have already created a file uh, that is called the user file text meaning that we already have done that previously 
So in this case, we're going to write down else um, another print line um, something like file was already there. Okay, let's just check it out. Ah, yeah, of course. We need another one. Curl the brace because here and this here belongs to that. So we need to make sure that this is separate from the other one. Good. Now um, we need to make sure that everything is correct here. Yeah. So before we're going to continue, we need to make sure that. Remember in our previous in, in my previous tutorials that I told you that if you use a text field then a virtual keyboard pops up. Here you also have to make sure that the virtual keyboard is also closed. So let's just use these um, yeah I'm gonna write down here. We need to make sure that these text fields get the recite first responder. Uh, call so that the virtual um, keyboard uh, will be closed. So, and we also need to make sure for the last name, the last name text field, resign first responder, and yeah, let's just remove this here. And for the age text field, resign first responder. Yeah, correctly. So this is what we need here. So now let's just double check our uh, curly braces here. We got this here. Here we got that here. We don't need this curly brace anymore. So you see that this is correct. Because just to make sure that every that the curly braces are correctly set, let's double click on them and then you see what is uh, hanging together as per this way. Uh, uh, with what? So here this belongs to that, and this here belongs to that, and so on and so forth. Good. So now that we have done this here correctly. And now we're done with this method here, meaning the save button function. But remember, let's just go back to our main server. So this function here just does th this basic logic, meaning we get the information from here, we create a, a string with them, we save this uh, string to a txt file on our, in our documents folder. But now our second job is to display the content of the txt file here in our label via clicking on this load file button. In order to do so, I just call it also here lat. And now we're going to call it the info from the file saved. And this will be of type string. And we're going to create a string. And this string, and it's very important, this string class also has a property that is called string with contents of file. And what is the file? In this case, so you see, it is the path to the file. The path to the file is that here. So we're going to paste, copy paste this here and we put this here. Now the, the encoding is the same as we had previously. Uh, NSUTF H string encoding error. And in this case now we're not going to take care of an error object. Just bear in mind I do this uh, right now because of saving time. Uh, but usually, please introduce some error handling here. This by error handling, I mean introducing some um, error handling mechanisms like checking for error objects, creating error objects, and so on and so forth. But now, just for demonstration purposes, I don't do that. Good. So now this should be it. Is there anything else wrong? Yeah, we need this exclamation mark, and now that should be it. The and then now we need to do something. Um, yeah, so this method, uh, this variable actually does this whole job. So this string here will contain all the information from the txt file that we saved previously uh, on the disk of our iOS device, and we now just have to simply 
uh, display the string uh, to our in our label. And how can how do we do that? We're gonna say the label text is what is it? This here the information that we retrieved, and that's it. So you see. That was quite a lot of code that we had to program, but mm, you will see that this information is very valuable and very important for future projects of yours. And now let's just compile and run it. Let's just check out whether we did everything correctly. Let's just go to our simulator. Okay, now we got our everything displayed, which is good. Let's just write down John Doe, who is 29. Let's just save this file. Okay, and here you see, okay, everything went well. Let's just make this a little, uh, a little bigger. Here you see, no problems. We could save the file, and it cannot was the user's info is John Doe. 29. Very good. And now let's load the file and let's just display the content of that file here in this label. Load. Very good. The user's info is John Doe 29. So you see that everything worked well and we did everything correctly. All right, Chuckers. Now we're done with this tutorial. Thumbs up if you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Stay tuned.